Let's look at your back end here. Um, the first thing that I'm seeing is that you have quite a variation in your contact points in terms of height. So ideally we want to catch the ball between hip and shoulder. And on the first two or three that I'm going to show you, that is okay. However, then on the ones where we can see that you're not quite as happy is you're letting them come above your shoulder. And then of course, um, kind of influences your contact point and of course the result of the ball. So I'll just let these run here. So the first one, I like the contact point right there. You can see that clearly between hip and shoulder. And what I do like in the preparation on those, so let's go back all the way back, is that you have your racket back with a loop both of your hands there as you're taking them back stay between your hip and your shoulder that's also really good um, and that you have a loop on the take back you get under the ball and you're brushing up to your contact point so those are all really good things the other thing that I do like is that you're stepping in here you're loading with your left foot that could potentially be a little bit more aggressive there's good shoulder turn and hip turn so you have the fundamentals there it's just the variation in your contact points that we're going to see in a little bit so again contact point here is good what we see a little bit then from the other angle ideally i would have liked those shots from the other side is that you're making contact out to the side of your body and not very clearly in front of your right hip so that is one thing that ideally we would also want to work on but let's let them run the next two or three are still good in contact point. So again, this one is okay in terms of height. And the last one was okay as well. So let's go here. So again, between hip and shoulder. But now I think from this perspective, we're seeing a little clearer you're making contact very very close to your body here and that has a little bit to do with how you take the racket back so ideally i would have liked a shot from the clearly from the back so as you're taking the racket back here you see that your upper arm is very very close to your rib cage and ideally you already want to have a little space there you want to have a little more space here as well between your left um, upper arm and your rib cage so everything else here is good the unit turn you see that here your left shoulder clearly comes around your right shoulder comes around your right hip comes around i do like that you're hitting this with a semi-open stance and you have your take back in a loop again so this is good load off your back foot and you then transfer your body weight forward however again you're a little close here and you see that here you're just wrapping that right arm basically around your hip so ideally that would be a little further away from your body already and as you're swinging up to the ball you want to have more space in front so instead of having that ball right next to you you would want that ball further out here in front and at contact point, you almost have an extended left arm. And you can clearly see here that's, that your arm is really angled off. And that, of course, informs then the follow through a little bit because you're coming very closely around your rib cage again. And you have to basically swipe sideways almost instead of being able to extend. So that is one thing that you really want to work on, keeping that ball way in front of your right hip. And you'll see that extremely then uh, when you're getting into trouble in terms of height. So that ball is still rising when you're making contact and you're making it very, that was a little mean here, clearly above your shoulder. So you have two options on those. As the ball is rising, you can always step forward a little bit more, move up to the ball and take it on the rise so that you're still catching it in front of your body and you catch it in your strike zone or you could which is a little bit of a more passive variation you could move back and let that ball drop back into your strike zone of course not quite as low 
Um, so those are the two options. And we see right, that it's very difficult when you make contact above your shoulder to still brush up to the ball and you're coming around really quickly. And that, of course, results in not really high quality balls. And we can see that, that you're not very happy with that ball. So that's a height issue. That's to me more a perception issue because you're not necessarily seeing enough or early enough that the ball is gonna be out of your strike zone. You're not reacting to it appropriately. So let's look at the next one. And I cut them together here a little bit. That you're also taking a little too high, right? So it's just within your strike zone but I would like it a little clearer, more like the other balls that you hit, more around your chest level or even waist level. Um, the other thing that you're seeing is there's not a whole lot of weight transfer really going forward because you literally almost have to jump up to get to the ball and still keep it in your strike zone. Um, and again, you um, here actually you're a little bit better in terms of distance sideways but again you hit it to the side of your body and you want to hit that ball in front um, you have the proper grip which is really good you have an eastern forehand grip on the left hand and i think you are from what i can see here i would have to see that a little more up close um, you have a continental grip so you should be able to really reach out in front more and almost extend your left arm and only then break your elbows and come around and that way you should have a little bit more control and not let the ball basically bully your racket which is what happens when you hit it to the side of your body because you're just not having your body mass behind the ball so again if you work a little bit more on keeping that um, contact point more in front reaching out to it of course, not reaching out, meaning leaning into it and just reaching and not getting your body there. Um, you have more control over the ball and you have a little bit more stability as well. Power is something that also happens, but I'm not the biggest fan of going power over stability. So I'll show you another player who does that extremely well. And she's a great example on how to use your left arm to control your backhand. I want you to really pay attention to Maria Sharapova's left arm. Okay, so because you have the same grips and the grips always uh, demand the swing path and the swing path demands the contact point. So if you have a continental grip on your right hand, on the lower hand, and an Eastern forehand grip on your left hand, you are able to swing um, more out in front instead of really coming around really quickly. You're able to better really get your body weight into the shot rather than having to rip around to get out of the way almost. So let's look at her back end here in a little bit of a slower pace and then we'll break it down. And you notice that also uh, even from this angle here, there's more air between her arms, her upper arms and the rib cage. So she's already taken the racket back a little bit further from her body and of course once you take it further back from her body you probably keep your arms further away from your body instead of tucking them in so other kind of markers that are really good of course are racket faces above um, the wrists and then she'll get under the ball here and also of course using her body her legs really really aggressively but again i want you to mostly focus on that left arm so at this point it's still bent but as she's swinging forward here, see here how it's almost extended, definitely more extended than yours. And at contact point, there is a slight bend. She's taking to my mind almost the ball a little too low, but this is still a fantastic um, shot right here. She takes the ball way in front of her center of gravity. And you're at this point really having very bent arms and that follows in or that then kind of informs the fall through as well. So you want your left arm almost extended and you see that here she falls through. Now it's fully extended and only when her left arm is fully extended 
does she break both elbows and swing around. So she starts with more air, basically under her arms, with more distance between her arms and her upper body, and then see how high that finish is and how far away her hands are from her body. So that's a textbook backhand right there. And the control comes almost entirely from her left arm. So that is what I would suggest that you're working on, really finding more space in front of you. And that also helps you to really transfer that body weight from your back foot into your front foot. And you see how wide of a stance she has here and how really low and controlled that center of gravity is. And the more, you know, the lower the center of gravity is, the more stability have you have. So instead of almost kind of reaching up to your contact point, again, work on those one of the two options, either move up to the ball, right, and take it on the rise, or drop back and let it drop back into your strike zone so that you can find your contact point well in front of your center of gravity, but also well in front of your right hip. Okay, so I hope that helps. So hopefully in a couple of months, once you worked on that, I'll see another one and see how you improved.